all right good people what's going on what's going on welcome back to another episode of the bison trading show coming at you live from the bison trading labs today is march no 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 april 9th 2021 just a regular friday no important news coming out no major things coming up so we should have a pretty much normal good flowing day today in the market so let's go ahead and jump straight into our analysis let's pull up these s p 500 futures that's what we'll be trading primarily today focusing on making sure that our first trade of the day is our best trade or at least a winning trade you know we don't want to say that it's our best because we can find that later on in the session as well and today i really just want to take it easy and the reason i say that is because for the past two weeks the market has really really been moving very slow as we can see from the daily chart we have had our moves up yes absolutely but as of recently the market has just been moving sideways like no one's business so i'm just expecting that that should continue going into today's session as well anything can happen but I have to lean more towards maybe just kind of observing and only taking trades if I see the best thing that I want on this chart. That's the thing. So let's go ahead and start our analysis on the hourly chart. Now, what we see is very healthy market action. We had an initial impulsive up move that created our flag right here. We had support of the flag. And then we had resistance up top at 4,075, as well as support down below 20 points at 4,055. Now, notice how we finally broken out of this area. I think I actually have it. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. So, look at how we finally broken out of this area. We broke out on April 7th at around 6 o'clock. So, we pushed through. Now, whenever you break out from a consolidation zone, one of the main things that you want to look for is the breakout retest. And that occurs when prices come back to those levels. They retest it. If it's a long trend, they bounce off of it, find support at those levels, and continue moving up. And that's exactly what we saw with these two little bottoms right here with these two wicks right Two wicks right here. Notice if you follow them to the left, they line up with what used to be our previous highs now that's typical market structure right there and that's what you should look for every time you're in an uptrend look for prices to come back and find support at what used to be the highs so once we found support right there we bounced up made a new all-time high at 4100 we finally broke that level but we were unable to close above 4100 with any really conviction and ever since then we kind of just pushed back down into the 4000s and right now we're at 4084 so prices are dropping a considerable little amount coming from the highs at 4102 now ever since that point we have been making lower lows right lower highs lower lows so we should come back and make a lower high so whenever we're considering a lower high being potentially made we always have to come back to our last low our last low is located up here at 4090 somewhere around this general consolidation zone area so that's the level that i'll be looking for for potential short trades today now let's make sure that we consider the overall picture because one thing that we don't want to do is go short into a, a major level of support now what i'm seeing right now is that this last candle that we just made if we follow it to the left let's see if we find any important levels that it runs into for one the first thing that we hit are these general bodies down here towards what used to be market support notice how the wicks did push past it but if you consider the bodies none of the bodies ever actually made it below this wick where we found support so that's the reason why prices bounced off of here from 4080 notice how they also line up with the close for this one candle right here which before all of these things happen to the right side of it this candle right here used to be the all-time high so one thing about making new all-time highs is that once we get past those levels we should always expect them to come back and play an important role when we're moving back down in terms of finding support or resistance levels for our trading so one thing i don't want to do is kind of short into an uptrend so i'll keep the uh the long move in mind because overall longer term picture is up and we don't want to get caught on the wrong side of that just trying to play the short term short move when we could play the long term up move it's a lot more 
it's a lot higher of a probability that we catch the up move than we do the down move. But we'll see what happens when the market opens. Based on what we see right here, right now, in the moment, I have to lean towards the short side, looking for my potential entries at 4,090, 4,088, somewhere within that general area. Now, if prices run past that level, that would invalidate the current thesis that I have now, and then I'll adapt and I'll change my bias to the long side and start looking for my long trades to continue. But until we see higher highs and higher lows, we can't really even consider the long trade right now. That's a mistake I made yesterday where I charted up, I found my levels of support and resistance, right? But I got too excited when prices came into my support level. I went long, prices bounced for a little bit. I was in profit for like a couple minutes, but then prices continued moving in the direction that they were moving. So that's a lesson right there that you always want to make sure that you don't just enter your position because it hits your level. You want to see it hit your level and then bounce off with higher highs and higher lows if you're looking for a long trade. So that's the same scenario and the same mentality that we'll be using today. Yes, we have a bounce off of support so far. So that's the first step. Now we just need that higher high and higher low. When we see those things, it's all good. But until then, we have to be patient and trade exactly what we see in front of us. So, just want to make sure we go through every chart, every time frame, so that we're not missing anything. Because on the 15, this candle right here, whenever you see these types of long tail wicks on the 15 minute chart, be very cautious, especially with a longer term trend is up. I've seen too many of these wicks like these that led to higher prices hourly chart lower lows and lower highs so far but that could be changing overall trend is definitely still up 926 we have about three and a half minutes so make sure you guys get ready make sure you have your snacks your water your notes ready your plan prepared Today should be a good day in the markets. I'm just taking a guess here saying that it'll be a little bit slow based on what we've been seeing so far this week. So be prepared to be patient. That's the main word for today. That's what we'll focus on. Patience, patience, patience. I don't know. Could we call this the head and shoulders? Eh, it's a little bit of a stretch. Not going to lie. But it is what it is. Our eyes don't lie. I see what I see. So we have to take that into consideration as well. So we'll keep that on the table. That's definitely very interesting for sure. Now, since we have a few, just one minute, let's go ahead and check Dollar Swiss. Okay. So last night on the Twitch stream, me and Darren were telling you guys that buyers will probably find a little bit of support down here and so far they have so right now we're still waiting for this head and shoulders formation to form we've already had our head get formed up here towards 94.50 94.75 ish we had our left shoulder get formed at 93.50 and now we're waiting for our right shoulder to come up and get formed so once you see that we'll definitely start looking for those short trades but don't hop in too early right now. We definitely could see a nice up move. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do. We're already in it so far. Now, the up move really wouldn't be confirmed until we get back above 92.85. Until that point, man, you gotta, you have to stay short on this trade. You have to look for the short trades. Absolutely. We're, We're coming, coming into, into the, the last, last lows right, right now. now and, and so far, far we've bounced off of them. So that, that should, should be interesting. interesting. We'll, we'll take back, back on this before, before the stream is over. And we'll see how this thing is playing out. Bitcoin. Not doing much. It's really just been consolidating for the past few weeks. Very interesting. But uh, we won't spend too much time on that. We have about a minute until the market opens. So let's go ahead. Pull up our platforms. Today we'll be trading S&P 500 futures from our live account. Just looking to make about three good trades. For my risk limits. I don't want to lose more than $30. So for me, I take about 
two points for every stop that I trade. I mean, for every trade that I trade, my stop is two points. Trade one micro contract, five dollars a point, so it's ten dollars per loss. So with a thirty dollar loss limit, that gives me about three trades. Well, three losing trades before I had to crap out and call it a day. So overall, we're just looking to be patient. I wouldn't be surprised if today I didn't take anything. Some days it'll be like that, but hopefully today will be a good Friday, man. We kind of got cheated last week because uh, we had we had the announcement of the non-farm payroll numbers, but the freaking market was closed that day. I felt cheated, man. I really did. Like the market just pulled the rug from under me. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Today is a new day. We have eight seconds until this market opens. Let's get it, people. Let's go. All right. 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The market is officially open. Oh, man. Selling off from the jump. Interesting. Okay. Remember, these were the levels we were talking about. 4,088. We're seeing prices move lower from those levels. But one thing about the open, you always want to give it a little bit of time. You don't want to just hop in from the jump unless things is just clearly 100% evident on the chart. But a lot of times during the market open, buyers come in, do one thing, sellers come in, reverse it, buyers come back in, undo what the sellers just did, and it's a back and forth. It's a back and forth long, long, long amounts of time, probably maybe 20 to 30 minutes after the market opens. Then the market figure out, figures out which direction it wants to move in. And then that's where we step in and we just ride the trend. That's it. But in the meantime, in between time, we just observe and try and figure out what the market is telling us so that when we get into the market, we know exactly what we need to do and how we need to handle our business. Alright, so if we follow our crosshairs over, we can see that prices are running into these last lows that we were just looking at. So in my opinion, if we break the the low point form the candle for the left, so if we break 4086, we should be clear for takeoff to the downside. A close below the previous candle should give us what we need. So on the one minute, that represents this wick right about here. So let's see what happens. But if not, prices will probably run up to these previous highs at 92, which it looks like it's about to do. So let's see if we can get a trade from 88.25, 88 and a quarter. Let me make sure my desktop audio is off because yesterday I was on YouTube. I was playing my music with the desktop audio on and you could hear it throughout the whole stream. As soon as I got done, YouTube hit me with the copyright immediately. Like, whoop, you can't use this video, buddy boy. So I got to make sure I'm not playing any music today but our order is at 88.25 we're looking to take it about five points up back to the top of market structure right here so far the market is just moving without us which we never like to see that's not what we like but we know the overall trend is up so we'll go ahead and just take our orders right here oh no actually let's oh uh, yeah okay i gotta put more money in my account to trade two contracts all right, so we'll just trade, you know, one one working order today. That's good enough for me. So we moved our order up a little bit to 88.75. I want to make sure that I get in on this move. I know exactly where it's going, and I don't want to miss out on this move. Maybe that's the FOMO talking, but sometimes it's good to be aggressive. And time will tell if this is the right time, but I believe so. Just need the market to come and fill our order. Doesn't look like it wants to. Dang. And that was the move right there up to 82. 
We almost had it, y'all. We almost had it. But if we can catch that second wave at 88, I'll take that as well. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But notice how volume kind of peaked up a little bit when prices moved up to that level. That's very concerning. That usually represents exhaustion. The only thing is that when you see higher volume bars like this towards the open within the first 10 minutes, you want to take it with a grain of salt because at the open, volume will always be high. So time will tell what that represents. But we'll just keep it on our on our radars and look out for it in the future. Mm. Thinking about if I should go long right here or if I should just be patient. Let's check the five minute. Let's see. Well, no. Prices came back up into what used to be the previous highs. The up move that I was looking for has already passed. So we just have to wait for the next opportunity. So we need prices to come back and make a higher low. So they should come back and retest these levels right here where we should hop in. That's our opportunity. Let's check the 15. I hate when my market, my charts do this. You see how this gap is right here? It's not supposed to be there. S&P 500 contracts are continuous. There are no gaps unless it's a Sunday. All right, so we'll do this right here. Just log out. Log back in. Trace love. What in the world? Hey, why is it? Oh, my God. Why are they doing me like this, huh? Why are they doing me like this? There we go. Okay. Situation handle. Back to normal. All right, bet. So on our 15 minute chart, we can see that we definitely had a V pattern reversal coming off of these bottoms. So if all is two scenarios, we either hit these market tops and reverse back down, or we hit these market tops, come back down, pull back, make the, the first higher low for this V pattern reversal, and then continue moving up. I mean, based on what we're seeing, we have to lean towards that for sure. It looks like the market is ready to go up, up, up in a wee. But I never, I never want to buy in a consolidation area like this with all of these wicks unless I get in towards the bottom. Now, I'm more so looking towards taking prices from this wick right here because sometimes you don't want to trade the most obvious level. You want to trade the secondary level because that's technically where you'll get the best opportunities and the best risk to reward. So we'll move our order right up to the bottom of this wick. And that's about as far as I want to move it, though. That's it. Let's see what's going on in the Dow Jones. Prices are moving higher. That's good. That's good. NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ is seeing some weakness today. Technology is suffering. But it's okay. They've had a great week. They had a great run. They need to take a break. Buyers are tired. All right. So my order has been filled. We came back. We hit this wick down here at 89. So I like that. I like that. I like that. Usually that's the best area to get in. Now, all we need to do is see prices stay above those levels, and we should be good. So right now, we're not in the clear quite yet. I mean, we're in profit so far. That's a good sign when you first take your trade, and it hits profit immediately. But we don't want to get our hopes up too much. We still need to see these prices break above 91, so that way we can have a clear path to our target at 94, about five points higher. Let's see if the market rewards us for taking a good entry. Yesterday, I, I took a few good entries, and the market just came and said, oh, not today. You're still going to take this loss. Here you go. 
have fun. Enjoy that. I was like, dang, Mr. Market, it's like that? He said, yeah, it's like that. I'm like, all right, big dog. <laughs> I'll take my losses. I'll get up out of here. But on a day-to-day -day basis, man, I'll take my setups when I see them, win, lose, or draw. And I would suggest that you guys out there do the same thing because if you back test and you have a specific strategy that you know works, you're doing yourself a disservice by not taking that trade every time because now you're trying to pick and choose what works and what doesn't. Nobody has a crystal ball, so you never know. But anyway, I don't want to get distracted. So far, our stop has been moved up to break even. That happens automatically once we pass nine ticks, which is about two points plus one tick. So two and a one fourth of a point. So that way we can just manage our risk because if prices come back down to these levels, I don't want to be in here. That's just something that I do because I know from my trading style, I learned a lot that sometimes I know when the trade is not going to work, but I'll be stubborn and not move my stop up because I say, I want to give it room to breathe. Knowing good and doggone well that it's not going to work out well for me. But you just say, well, I'll take a chance. What I've learned is that you want to decrease those chances. You want to decrease your risk as many times as you can. So we'll keep our stop right there to protect us. But until we break past this consolidation zone, we still have a little bit of an obstacle before we hit our, our target. Because we still technically have not broken past these high areas over here from the pre-market. Now, we came up and we tested them. Yes, we did test them. But we have to break through them. That's the most important thing. So let's be patient. Give the market time to do what it has to do. Let's just hope that it doesn't come back and hit our break even stop. That's not what we want at all. Come on, buyers, step in here. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if the break even stop does get hit. The way the market has been moving all week, it hasn't really been trending. In order for our position to start working, we need the market to trend right now. But based on what we've seen so far, I don't know. But we'll just stick in the trade and see what happens. I like to manage my trade actively as it's open. like the break even stop is about to get hit sellers have stepped in with a lot of momentum a lot of strength but no surprise like we've been saying all week the market has just been range bound it hasn't really hasn't trended now yesterday going into the close we did see prices kind of have a nice big shoot up to the upside but by the time we saw that move everybody was so just bored and just upset with the market that they already walked away at least i did so let's just be patient i feel like i've been saying that all week long because the market has just been moving so slowly but like my boy empower vocational on instagram told me earning season is coming up so we know for a fact that during earnings season, we will definitely see a lot of volatility and volume come back into the market for sure. Especially as big name companies like all of the big Fang, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Square Cash, PayPal. All of those companies start reporting. Boeing, Delta, it'll definitely start moving the markets. And you got to understand, markets always move in cycles. You have periods of boom, 
and then you have periods of quietness. Now, boom just means a period where the markets are moving either up or down, but the market is trending. And then, of course, you know, the market can never trend forever. It's like when a person exercises, you can't run forever. You eventually have to stop, take a break, catch your breath. That's what the market has been doing for the past two weeks. Just catching this breath like, <gasps> Ooh, these buyers have been working me, man. They've been working me, man. I need a break. So we like, okay, market, we'll give you a few weeks. Do your thing. Come back when you're ready. So that's all we're doing. We're just waiting until the market starts trending again. Now, one thing I've learned is that you have to adapt and adjust to the market environment you're trading in. So if you're a trend trader, you want to make sure that when the market is not trending, you either sit to the side and don't take any trades or you switch up your strategy and change it to maybe a consolidation type of strategy because that's the market environment you're trading in. It's always about being dynamic and being able to think on the fly and make decisions when needed. Always try and trade a strategy that fits the current market environment. And uh, that's all I'm doing today. You know, there's been a few trades where I saw a consolidation zone. At first, I thought trend traded, trend traded. Nope, nope. I switched over to my consolidation strategy and used those methods. So I bought and went long towards the bottom of the consolidation zone and took it up about eight points. One of my best trades this, uh, well, not this week. I think it was last week, but definitely one of my favorite trades. Now, back to these charts. What we just saw is not promising. We saw a long tail candle wick on higher volume. This is definitely, well, potentially exhaustion volume because if we look to the left, it's the highest volume bar that we've seen since since this last one that we made at 933. Remember, we were talking about that. Now, look at where this last high was made for that volume bar. Notice how it's made at the same level that this candle opened from. Not a coincidence. So more than likely, we'll probably see our break even stop, come back and get hit. But because the overall trend is up, we'll still hold on just in case buyers want to step back in and push this thing up again. But I doubt it. So I'm OK with my break even stop. Like I said, man, I'm not looking for too much today. If I can't get my big trades and I don't want anything. And that's how I'm rocking out today. So this right here will allow us to just have a visual representation of the consolidation zone that we're stuck in between. So until we break above or below these prices, there's really not much to talk about. So far, we're definitely probably going to see that break even stop get hit. We made uh, a top up here at 93, and so far we just made a lower high. So unless we get above 92, it's not looking good for us in terms of the long side.
right, so now we're back at the top of the zone, right at 92. We need prices to break above it in order for our target to be hit. So right now we're seeing prices kind of run into a little bit of resistance up here towards these wicks, which makes sense because if we look over to the left, we can see that this area has definitely held up as resistance before. So it's interesting. We'll see how prices react at these levels. If they come back into the zone, they'll probably come back down to the bottom once again. I wouldn't be surprised. We call days like this CS. Consolidation Fridays. Get in and get out. Catch a move if you can. So if we can get this profit target to get hit, that'll probably be the last trade we take today. I don't want to force it. I don't want to push it. Market has been fleeting all week long. I just want to capitalize. I just want to ring that cash register, man. Market has been beating me up all week long. It's about time I get some hits in. Boom, boom, boom. Back at you, yeah. I don't quit. Mm, man. This is how I've been feeling all week. Just sleepy. That's what the markets do to me. That's what they've been doing to me the past two weeks. They've been rocking me to sleep just slowly but surely. Just oh, oh market still open? Oh, oh, okay. Let me trade. Let me trade. It's ridiculous, man. But sometimes that's just how the market moves. You can't tell the market when to move. You just have to move when the market decides it wants to, and that's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. So right now we should expect prices to come back, test the top of our consolidation zone, and then continue moving higher. Because right now we're definitely running into a little bit of resistance up here at 93 and three quarters, which is not too far away from this top wick right here at 93 and a half. As a matter of fact, it's only one tick away. So that should definitely hold up, come back, make a double top, well double, well not even double bottom, just find support down here at the top of the zone. We should be good. Not too far away from my profit target getting hit. About three ticks. So that could happen right now. There we go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's make sure our orders got filled though the right way. And they did. There we go. And that's it. I'm done. I'm done. Get my profits and I'm gone straight like that man i am not playing with this market today no sir you've been beating me up all week i finally got mines 
I'm leaving. I'm not sticking around to see what's going on. So before we leave, before you ever close out your trading session, you always want to make sure you do this right here, which is pull up your apps. If you have Windows, it'll be pretty easy for you. Just go right here to Sniffing Tool. Hold on, let me bring the whole chart into the picture. And boom, okay, cool. Pull up Sniffing Tool. If you have a Mac, I think it may be the same name, but you definitely have the app on your computer. It'll just be under a, a different title. But pull out your screenshot tool. Go ahead, journalize that trade. 1021 955 all right what not valid oh okay there we go all right and that right there wraps it up i remember i told you guys before we get off i want to make sure i go back and look at dollar swiss to see what's been going on so let's pull up the five and see what's happening Yeah, so on the five minute, we really just came back up to these tops at 92.80. And from that point, we've fallen about 17 points back down to 92.63. So that's pretty interesting. I think uh, Dollar Swiss might be back in downtrending mode again. So our head and shoulders may not even form. But that's a long term setup. So we'll give it a lot more time. But so far, we bounced off of those last lows and we're moving to the downside. I wonder if I should have held that trade, but the markets haven't been trending all week, so there's no way I can hold trades, not in this environment. I'm in and I'm out, but with that being said, man, I appreciate you guys so much for pulling up. I hope you learned a lot today. I enjoyed you guys for tuning in with me. I really appreciate it, and let's go over the schedule for next week. Make sure you tune in on Thursday and Friday, so Tuesday actually so tuesday thursday and friday we will we will have classes we will have our live market analysis session tuesday and thursday i won't be able to make it on tuesday but darren is going to hold it down for you guys and on thursday i'll be back live in action and we'll get it in for our live market analysis 9 35 p.m eastern standard time tuesday and thursdays and then on friday same time 9 10 a.m same time we started today 9 10 a.m eastern standard time I'll catch you guys there, man. Have a great weekend. Also, make sure you get your back testing in as well. We always want to make sure that we're finding ways to improve ourselves as traders in this market every day. I know it's a lot of things that I have to go back and back test this week. I need to focus. I need to focus on taking better entries, being more patient, um, occupying my time when the market is not moving, and just keeping a positive mental outlook. So, those are the things I'll be working on this week. Make sure you work on the things you need to as well. We'll get back live to the markets on Monday. I'll be on YouTube, 9, 10 a.m., Ty Trades Futures. Make sure you follow me at that same name on both Instagram and YouTube. I appreciate you guys. I don't want to talk your ears off, so I'll see you later.